Oh, good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, good morning, depending on when you find this. Just want to talk a little bit today about some uh, things I've studied. And uh, any of you, you've been, spent any of your life in a Christian church, uh, more than likely you've heard the same thing too. And I'm going to start off talking about a few things and then transition to the point that I want to make. And see, I'm starting off like this to make a point on how bad certain people want to mislead the masses, especially the Christian masses. And, you know, so buckle up. You know, many of us say that white people manipulated the Bible, which they did. Uh, many of us say white people gave us Christianity, which they did. So why do we refuse to listen to our brothers and sisters who try to teach us the lies we've been taught and continue um, on and on? And so, you know, if you think about it, the Israelite Joseph rose to prominence in Egypt among dark-skinned folks. And when his brothers, his own blood brothers came to visit him, they didn't even recognize him because he looked like the Egyptians. We know that Israelite Moses was raised in Pharaoh's house among Egyptians and no one ever suspected anything. We know that the man we call Jesus descended of Israelite David and Solomon and Jesse and his parents fled into Egypt to assimilate and escape Herod's persecution. We know of another Israelite named Saul or we know him as Saul, whose name was later changed to Paul, who was also mistaken for an Egyptian, and he told him he was from the tribe of Benjamin. So, how did all of these so-called white men live among black Egyptians if they were white and were never recognized? And see, you know, now many of us know what many pastors have taught us. And see, the etymology of the word Adam is red dirt, red soil, or humus. Have you ever looked at humus? What color is it? Now, there actually used to be a crayon in the 64 count Crayola box called Indian Red. Guess what color Indian Red is? It's actually brown. Now, don't try to find a crayon that says that now because they removed it from the box. Uh, Maccabees 1, 1 Maccabees uh, chapter 3, verse 38, it tells us that the heathens painted the images to their own likeness. Now, guess what white religious scholars taught us, taught these seminary students, your, the ones that stand in your pulpit that you call pastors, and deliver the word every not Sabbath Sunday. See, they taught us that the law was done away with, and we're now under grace. Really? I mean, what was Yahusha, the man you call Jesus, and Paul teaching from? Because there was no such thing as the New Testament at the time they were teaching. See, over in Revelation 12, I believe, starting at verse 9, it says that Satan deceives the whole world. What does the world teach? The world, the Christian world, teaches that we are under grace and not the law. Now, hear me well. Make no mistake about it. I fell into that trap of grace, too. I think I might have even uh, wrote about it in my book, but hey, what do I know? I made with Amazon and Barnes and & Noble, and through me. But if we are under grace, why does Yahushua say what he says in Matthew 7? 23. And what he says in Matthew 7, 23 is that I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawbreakers. Or, uh, depending on which translation you write, those of you who practice lawlessness. Uh, 1 John 3 and 4 says, everyone who is guilty of sin is also guilty of violating law. For sin is violation of law. So, if we are under grace, why does the New Testament, which was written by men who were operating under the law, 
say that if we participate in lawlessness, you know, breaking the law, the Messiah will say he never knew us. The New Testament doesn't say he will tell us to depart from him if we practice gracelessness. As a matter of fact, in Matthew 5, 19, he said, whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men so shall be called least in the reign of the heavens. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the reign of the heavens. But see, you know, these uh, cemetery, I mean, seminary hustlers have added to and removed from the Bible. Ecclesiasticus, that's one of the books they removed from the Bible, uh, 1919 says the knowledge of the commandments of Yahuwah is the doctrine of life. See, they removed the Apocrypha so the people wouldn't follow the law because they were teaching another doctrine. See, if you go, go read De uh, Deuteronomy 4 and 2, Deuteronomy uh, 12 and 32, uh, back to Revelation 22 and 19, uh, Jeremiah 26, 2, and I believe Ecclesiastes 3 and 14. See, Ecclesiastes and Ecclesiasticus are two different books. And see, all of those verses I just mentioned make it clear that we are not to add or subtract to the word because the word is already right. So if the word is already right and we're not supposed to add to or subtract from, why was the Apocrypha removed? I told you some video on a video some time back, I don't know how long ago it was, that I found my father-in-law's old Bible. And guess what was in his old Bible? Part of the Apocrypha. And now that I've, uh, you know, I've actually found, I'm on my desktop now, but it's not on my desktop anymore. I've saved it in different places. But I actually have copies, old calligraphy, digital copies of some old Bibles. And guess what's in them? The Apocrypha. One of them, I think, is from 1610. Uh, one, I think, is from 1582. Then I think I have a, you know, digital copy of the authorized 1611 King James Version because these so-called authorized versions we have now uh, from 1611 were actually manipulated back in the 18th century, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, 18th or 19th century. I can't think off the top of my head right now. So. We're not supposed to add to or subtract from the word. But they subtracted all of those books of the Apocrypha. And then what they left in, they changed it all. Especially when they were trying to run the slave trade. And you know, go back and listen to some of those other uh, videos where I talked about the slave trade in the Christian church and what these pastors and all these people have done with the Bible to manipulate, to make sure black people stayed in some subjugation to white folks. Hey, don't get mad at me. The truth is the truth. You know, y'all, you know, don't mind bringing up the Holocaust every year, you know, because, you know, we like to keep the white atrocities in our face, but y'all black people get over slavery, get over Jim Crow, get over black codes, get over everything that have been done to you in this country. But don't forget about what happened over in Germany. That didn't even happen here. But let me get back to what I'm talking about. But we're not supposed to add or subtract to. See, seminary and so-called biblical scholars, that, and I'm, I don't even call them biblical scholars. I call them religious scholars because they're preaching religion. They're not preaching Bible. They're teaching religion. They're not teaching Bible. And I've said many times before, I'm not an expert at the Bible. I'm just studying. And it took me getting out of the church to truly study. Because, see, you can't keep going, get this same stuff every week, in and out, in and out, in and out. And then you're trying to study at home and you getting something totally different from what's being taught in the pulpit, which is why the Bible says every time the assembly gathers, there's supposed to be more than one teacher. But all of your Christian churches has one teacher at every gathering. But the Bible says you're supposed to have two to three every time. So the word never gets perverted. 
So these so-called religious scholars have told us what was canonized and what wasn't. But the so-called Christian religious scholars never talked to you about what Constantine did. They never talked to you about the Council of Nicaea. They don't talk to you about that stuff. Christianity is part of the original Bible, which was called the way mixed with a whole lot of paganism. And that's what your Christianity is. Christianity is part of the way mixed in with a whole lot of paganism. Study it for yourself. I have a video on this channel say it's Christian and pagan. Show me the way. You see, I still ain't got back on the top. But see, what I understand about these guys who manipulated the Bible, you know, one of the things one guy told me that the you know, four books of Maccabees were never verified. And what I have personally understood is what they mean when they say that something like Maccabees wasn't verified means it wasn't verified to their liking. And see, if you start reading those four books of Maccabees, you're going to understand why the heathens and Gentiles didn't want you to read the Maccabees. Because the government came in in one of those books in the Maccabees and said for everybody to forget what their forefathers and ancestors had did in the past when it came to the Bible and he was going to set a new decree and he wanted everybody to get rid of the laws they were following and follow his new decrees and everybody almost everybody said we're going to follow the king's decree. And Mattathias said, no, we ain't. Me and my family are going to follow what our ancestors taught. And I don't care who get upset about it. I talked about that on another video too. But see, that's what your seminary is doing. Your seminary is being controlled by the government. Your churches are being controlled by the government if they 501c3. So when they say, the a certain book wasn't verified and canonized. That means it wasn't verified and canonized to a Gentile and heathen like it and pagan like it. See, according to them, Jasher is not canon either, even though Jasher is mentioned in more than one place in the Bible. Why did they remove these books? It's because these books are very clear who the 12 tribes are. They're very clear on what color the tribes are. Guess what else? The books are also very clear on telling us who the real Gentiles are, and it ain't black Americans. See, the church, seminaries, and pastors have all told us that Adam and Eve were white. I, I was reading through a book, um, I guess about a week ago, and I, I read the book years ago, but I was just reading through it to, you know, get a new fresh perspective on <laughs> racism. <laughs> and the name of that book is White Man's Bible about being classic. Now, if you're a black person and you really want to get angry, read that book. See, I, like I said, I can learn from anybody. And, uh, but I mean, it's not an easy book <laughs> for a black person to read. Trust me on that one. He's got another book. I can't think of the name of it, but I had that one too. And, uh, it's about as bad. <laughs> but see, they taught us that Adam and Eve were white, and they, a lot of them are still teaching that. They've all taught that the Messiah was white, and even made images of him to prove it to us. Although the Bible says to not make any graven images. Now, we've heard of the word graven image, or the phrase graven image, but do we really understand what a graven image is? It is an idol. I mean, I know when the church I was baptized in and every church I went to growing up, every church had a picture of white Jesus on the wall. And if you went in a Catholic church, they had Jesus hanging up on the cross in every Catholic church you've never been in. Those are graven images. And on top of that, they wrong. See, they painted pictures of Paul being white. How Paul going to be white if he was mistaken for an Egyptian? They painted Pictures of the 12 tribal brothers is white. Y'all are sort of all those pictures of the Lord's Supper. What does 1st Maccabees 3 and 48 say again? See, why? Why did I talk about this? Because if these wicked demons thought enough to modify the Bible, which are the words of our Father, 
Why do we use the names the demons gave us to address him and his son? See, God is a title and Jesus came from paganism. See, if we don't know, the father's going to understand because we've been lied to. But if we find out and we still refuse to do what's right, do you think he's going to forgive that? I mean, I don't know. But I don't want to take that chance. I remember, and y'all heard me mention the book before, Burden of Freedom, Miles Monroe said, uh, freedom requires responsibility. Guess what else requires responsibility? Knowledge and awareness. See, once you get knowledge and awareness, you can't claim ignorance no more. Now you're just going to be flat out stupid. And my wife don't y'all like me using that word, but, you know, after all these years, she still ain't found another one for me to use yet. So I just have to keep using it until I keep looking and find another. So I don't want to take a chance if I find out that the Bible has been totally manipulated like that. And I'm still going to go off of what these liars in the pulpits done taught me. See, it's like I told an atheist some years back. You know, I would rather live my life like there is a God and get to the end and find out it wasn't than to live my life like it isn't a God to get to the end and find out it is. See, in the book of Tobit, you know, one of the books they tried to hide, Tobit says, keep the law and commandments and show yourself merciful and just so that it may go well with you. That's in the book of Tobit, chapter 14 and 9. See, the only difference on the law um, is he wrote them on tablets of stone in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, it's written on our minds and our hearts. You know, and that's stated over in Hebrews 8 and 10. See, and it actually repeats that again in Hebrews 10 and 18. And I'm in Hebrews 10 and 18, it says, This is the covenant I will make with them. After that time, says the Lord. Now, I'm just reading from uh, regular scripture, regular Bible online because, you know, I don't. I didn't, have, I didn't bring my other Bible in front of me while I was recording this. And because Lord is a pagan name too. Lord actually mean, literally means Baal. B-A-A-L. Baal. Lord means Baal. So when you call, when you say, oh Lord, uh, Lord forgive them, you're saying Baal. Oh Baal. Baal forgive them. That's what you're literally saying. Now that you know, you need to start trying to change your vocabulary. But he says, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. See, the New Testament says believers will know him and his laws and there will be no need for scribes and Pharisees to teach us. Do I need to say that again? <laughs> once the law, once we know him, once we become born again, we will know him and his laws and there will be no need for scribes and Pharisees to teach us. Well, you scribes and Pharisees, you figure it out. See, do you know what law was done away with? The way we atone for our sin. We don't offer animals anymore. See, by saying we are only under grace, pastors are literally standing in a pulpit encouraging lawlessness. I saw somebody who graduated seminary say something the other day about uh, wherever state that was, they said they're going to put the Ten Commandments back in front of a public building school or something. And, you know, this uh, graduate of seminary school said, you know, I have a problem with this, you know, because, and said some other things, but, you know, I have a problem with this because we're not under the law anymore. We're under, under grace. You know, they graduated seminary school, I think, about five years ago. So they're still teaching those lies in seminary. And y'all know I like to call it cemetery because if you go to cemetery, that's where the gospel goes to die. See, your pastors are encouraging lawlessness when they get up there and say, we're not under the law anymore, we're only under grace. What was the Messiah teaching from? What was Paul in the 12 teaching from? What was Timothy a teacher from? Timothy was teaching from Paul, but where did Paul get it from? It wasn't no New Testament. They wrote the Paul wrote the most of the New Testament. 
Mark wrote the New Testament. Peter didn't write his books in the New Testament. Mark wrote them for Peter. So, the New Testament says nothing against the Torah. Nothing. Your pastors and seminaries are the only ones speaking against the Torah. We say we love God, but we are taught to reject his laws from pulpits all over the country and all over the world. Now, you keep saying, I mean, I just don't understand how we can keep saying we're under this grace and all over the New Testament is talking about the laws. John, that's New Testament, right? 14.15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. All over the New Testament, we actually see that we're supposed to be following the law. If these so-called religious teachers have done all of this, they have added, they have taken away, and they have manipulated the word. When our Bible tells each one of us, it gives each one of us specific instructions to not do that. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to hope you get in on grace alone? Or will you turn back to the law like the book says we should have never left from? I will talk to you later. Have a great one.